In this video, I'm going over section two, three, which was called normal distributions. And so the kind of big takeaways from this are the empirical rule and percentiles. So this um, section was kind of heavy in examples in terms of how to calculate things, but they were all really important. And so I just wanted to go through one of each type and make sure that when you have your notes that you have these rules written out. And so the fastest way for you to answer a question is to have these drawings there. So remember that the empirical rule itself is that 68, 95, 97, right? So these numbers pertaining to 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% is within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% is between three standard deviations and the mean. That those numbers are the empirical rule. What they went through within the problem is the process of figuring out what each chunk, so between zero and one standard deviation, between one and two standard deviations, and so on, um, they went through and calculated those values with you. For example, just using symmetry, so knowing that the mean represents 50% of the data, so half of the data is there. So if I took 68% divided by two, that's where they got the 34. Then they took 95% divided it by two and subtracted the 34 to get 13.5, right? So they went through that process with you. So at the very least, you should have um, this drawing or this one without the 68, right? This doesn't give you the 68, 95 percentiles. But you need to have one of those drawings on your notes because that's gonna be the fastest way to get the answers when you're answering a question. Um, the next thing they talked about was percentiles. So to get the percentiles, they literally just added the values together. So 0.15% is obvious, it's just that one. Then they added 0.15 plus 2.35 to get two and a half. Then they added 13 and a half to that to get 16, right? We, we talked about the mean is 50%, then they added 34% and so on in order to get these values. So again, having this drawing maybe I guess this one would be the best one to have, um, will help you do the problems within this section quickly. So I'm gonna reference that as I do examples. So I did do one example, even though I feel like they gave you a lot and it was a good section, um, just so that you could have a little bit more practice if you need it. So one thing that I wanted to recommend that I do is I don't ever really draw that whole curve. I just draw the number line because the curve's always the same. Right. And so just to save space, I typically will just draw that number line. So if I'm just drawing the number line, I'm going to put the mean in the middle and then I'm going to go out one, two, three standard deviations to the right and one, two, three standard deviations to the left. So to create this curve and taking the mean, which they tell me is 5.2. 525. So I've got elephants have the longest pregnancy of all mammals. One species has a mean gestation period of 525 days. Um, so think about that. They're pregnant for almost two years there. Um, and then a standard deviation of 32 days. So remember that to create this, I'm taking that 32 and I'm adding it to get the next value. If I'm going backwards, I'm subtracting that 32. And so that's how I'm creating this number line to identify what the values would be on my bell curve, on my normal curve. So I've got 557, sorry, if I add that, and then 589 and 621, okay? So then if I subtract 32 instead to progress here, I've got 493 days, 461 days, and 429 days. So what I'm gonna do is use these values compared to um, my percentile and empirical rule curve to answer the questions. So for the first problem, it's asking me the longest 16% of all elephant pregnancies last at least how many days? So if I think about the longest 
I'm not looking at the 16th percentile, right? So the 16th percentile gives me the shortest 16%. But because of symmetry, if I reflect over and look at where that line is, so this is one standard deviation away from the mean below, if I were to go one above, the 84th percentile would actually give me that 16%, right? If I add 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15, that's going to give me um, the 16% that are longest. And so that means that it's at least one standard deviation above the mean, which is 557 days. Next, the question is asking me, the middle 68% of all elephant pregnancies last between how many and how many days? So remember that the empirical rule tells us that the middle 68 is between, is one standard deviation from the mean. So if we look at our one standard deviation from the mean, that's these values here. If I go one away, it's between 493 and 557 days. Only 2% of all elephants' pregnancies last less than blank days. So that is going to be a percentile, right? Because percentiles are the area to the left, the less than area. So if I find the 2.5 percentile, that's here, notice it's two standard deviations below the mean. So if I look at two standard deviations below the mean, that's this 461 days. So that means that only two and a half percent of all elephant pregnancies last less than 461 days. Okay, now these are gonna look backwards where I'm given not percentiles or percentages, I'm given the days and I have to identify what these percentages are. So if I look at what percent of elephant pregnancies last less than 589 days, that means I want to find all of the area to the left of 589. So if I compare that to this, this is two standard deviations above the mean. So I'm finding all this area to answer this question. I can use the percentiles for this. So that means that the answer for this question is 97.5%. I don't have to do any adding because it was a perfect percentile, right? It's not between two values, it's below a specific value. Okay, so that what percent of elephant pregnancies last between 525 and 557 days? So it's just this chunk here. So if I look at that, that's between the mean and one standard deviation above. If I go from the mean to one standard deviation above, that's 34%. So that means that 34% of these pregnancies last between 525 and 557 days. Um, for the next one, we have what percent of elephant pregnancies last more than 493 days? So more than means I can't use percentiles. So if I find 493, I want to find this area here. Um, so if I'm looking at this, and I want to find, so I'm one standard deviation below the mean, that's this. Remember that one thing that we know is once we hit this, all of this is 50%. So 50% of elephant pregnancies last more than um, 525 days. So to figure out how many last more than 493, I just need to add 34 to that. So that's going to be 34 plus 50, which is 84%. Okay, then the last one is asking me about within 96 days of the mean. So what does that mean? That means that I'm going to take and add 96 and subtract 96 from the mean in order to tell what these data values are. So remember that the mean was 525. So if I do 525 plus 96, that gives me 
621. And then if I do 525 minus 96, that gives me 429. So if I look at those values on my number line, if I'm going between um, 621 and 429, that's all three of my standard deviations. So notice it's one, two, three standard deviations above and one, two, three standard deviations below the mean. And so if I go all the way back to my empirical rule, that's this bar, right? So I'm looking at three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below. So that answer is gonna be 99.7%. So using these graphics and making sure that you have them in your notes is the best way to quickly do these problems because then you can just reference them. And again, my hint is don't draw that curve every time, just draw yourself a little number line, put the mean in the middle, add and subtract the standard deviation, and then reference that to the other curve. I mean, you could always copy down the percentages each time, but that'll just save you some writing.